Good evening. Welcome to tonight's On the Edge with me, Theo Chalmers. Tonight's show is two hours long and live. So if you have any questions for my guests during the show, text them to 8777 with the word edge, a space, and then your name, location, and your message. And we'll try to pick up any that really hit the mark. They're all charged at standard rate, so why not get ready to text? Tonight's show is all about a secret that has been suppressed and denied for over a hundred years. A secret that affects all our lives. A secret that the powers that be simply do not want you to know. However, thanks to the work of people like my guest, it's a secret that more and more people are becoming aware of, and one which, as the second youngest ever fellow of the Chartered Institute of um, Bankers, he has spent 24 long years researching. He believes he knows exactly how and why we are um, experiencing a regular cyclical collapse of the global economy and banking system, and who is behind it, and what we can do to get our wealth back. He also believes that the rabbit hole goes much deeper than just our banking system. My guest helped David Icke create the database for his early appearances in the UK and established the um, Earth Foundation with Adrian Atkinson, the purpose of which was to disseminate suppressed information in many fields and disciplines. He has been described as England's most dangerous man. He is Mark Cocking. What a show we've got tonight. Mark, welcome. Hello, Thea. Really good to have you on the show. Thank you. Um, you obviously were trained as a banker, financial advisor. Yeah. And you were obviously very good at that, since you were the youngest ever fellow of the... Depends what side of the fence you're on, I suppose, but yes. Or the second yeah. youngest ever. Yeah. Um, but something must have occurred to you. Some, some, you must have found out something that made you feel uneasy about what you were doing. Yeah. What um, was that? Was there one thing? No, uh, there was various things, but there's only one thing that was that really caught my interest. And I think, as I've said before, it was when asking questions about who issued the currency, either people didn't know or you were told not to go there. Um, but if, and that was intriguing. The currency, it's the Bank well, of England, well, isn't it? Yeah, but this is it. But um, the Bank of England issues the currency, but who are the Bank of England? And if, or should I say, why is that currency issued as a debt to our nation? Now, now I know this is a fundamental point in everything that you say and do, the fact that money is issued as debt, and it's not mm -hmm. just issued as, as debt here, it's issued as debt all over the world, isn't yeah. it, by all the central banks? Yeah. Um, so how else could it be issued? Not as a debt. Simple as that. Print the money ourselves as a nation state, and the nation state then has it in its coffers to do with, well, all the things it would do once, as if it had been loaned to them. It's, it's basically debt-free currency. So if it's issued as a debt, that yeah. debt plus interest has to be paid back. That's right. And the only things you can pay back the debt with is more money. More money. That's so you can never people. ever pay back all the money nope. with the interest That's it. with the money that you've been loaned. Exactly. It's so impossible, isn't it? It is impossible. It's like borrowing hundred pounds and owing back hundred and ten. Exactly. And if you can take that, if, forgetting the the economy as a whole, and just work with a hundred pounds sum, if I lend you a hundred pounds, you have to pay that hundred pounds back plus, let's say, 10% interest, so you must pay me £110. Where are you going to get the 10 from? If that's the only £100 that's ever been If that's the only 100 So this is a simple model of the reality. OK. Um, because only £100 has been put into the, our economic system. So how are you going to pay me the other 10 you are You're going to lend it from me as well. Now, if I happen to choose not to lend you that £10 and foreclose on your debt, we have a, 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 a financial crisis. We have a credit crunch. Credit crunch. And it, mm, that sounds no, vaguely familiar. And, and this, this is what sort of amused me over the years. The, the only thing that does amuse me about it is the number of bankers who are, who are just so dim they can't even wake up to this as a, as a reality. And those who do choose to ignore it because, well, that's the way the system is. OK, but it's not mm. just about creating fiat currency as debt. And I think it's important to state what fiat yeah. currency is, isn't it? Yeah. It's so let's just quickly go there and then we'll go on to the who's behind it all. Okay. Right. To, to issue the currency as a debt, to actually um, 
demand repayment of the capital and the interest, fiat currency, th th that's, that's what undermines everything. That is actually what causes all the economic issues and problems that we have. No. Well, well fiat is Latin, isn't it? And, and if, mm. my, if my Latin is correct, and I might be going out on a limb here, Go but I it. think it's the first word in the Bible, isn't it? Fiat lux means let there be light. Mm -hmm. And therefore, fiat currency must be let there be currency. Mm -hmm. It's so made that out pretty, of nothing. That sums it up, really, doesn't it? It's let a, there be currency, and there is... Ex nihilo, I think, is the, the other Latin phrase. From, that, from nothing. From nothing. Um, and that is, in fact, what happens. So if I am the Bank of England and you are the UK, I create money out of nothing. I print it. Or not print it. Or not print it if I decide not to. If it's electronic. And I don't give it to you. I simply lend it to you and you must pay that back. But in order to pay it back, you must borrow the interest that you're going to pay me anyway from me. And the inevitable outcome of that is inflation and devaluation of the currency and ultimate collapse, the second I choose not to lend you the interest to pay back. And because inflation is like the hidden tax, isn't it? Inflation is man-made. It's uh, a hidden tax, though, it isn't is. it? It is. It's the hidden tax. You go because to... if you buy something uh, and then later on it's worth more, to buy, or it's more expensive to buy, then mm. the thing you've got is worth less than you paid for it. That's it. If you have a, a pot of money which has a certain value and then... Uh, again, let's say it's the hundred pounds in that pot. That is the economy. Uh, if you chuck another 50 quid into that pot, well, the assets haven't changed. So the actual value of that money has, has to decrease in order for things to remain the same. So inflation is entirely man-made. So you can go to college, you can study for a degree in economics. applied economics or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they will tell you, and I can't actually remember the exact phrasing now, but it's... Um, Inflation is an excess of demand over supply. End of. Which is utter rubbish. It, well, I can't add any more words to it. It is utter rubbish because what inflation is is the fact that the damn currency was loaned in the first place. So we have a system where there's money that doesn't exist. It's mm -hmm. effectively only worth something because people trust it to be worth something. Yeah. Uh, and it's... And it's made out of thin air mm -hmm. and then lent at interest that's right to governments and other banks and it, it's important to get this we must trust the currency if, if we don't trust the currency it collapses obviously so that's not really an issue there has to be confidence in the financial system now if someone like me starts talking out within the system I'll be accused of actually undermining the economy or whatever which is utter trash because the only thing that undermines the economy is the fact that the bank loaned that money to our nation in the first instance. Well, there was a time when our currency was paid against uh, gold or sterling, right. yeah. silver. <clears throat> yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah. So, it, so it, didn't it have some notion of... Because it used to say on the banknotes, I promise to pay the bearer on demand one pound, but that would be one pound of silver, presumably, would it? That's quite a lot of silver, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it, it had an asset. You wouldn't buy much silver today with Not a pound, a would you? <laughs> it had an asset backing, and gold and silver have always been that asset. Um, but no longer is that the case. I think it was um, our dear leader, Tony Blair, who made sure that gold values dropped and then sold the whole lot. And as yeah, but it, was, it wasn't linked to the, to the... Currency wasn't linked to the gold for a long, long time, was it? No, um, no, I mean, to, to get rid of the gold standard, I forget the date it actually happened, but the gold standard was scrapped um, within my lifetime, which I think is about 20, 28 years, uh, <laughs> I'd like to think. Um, that's all gone. So there is no asset backing. We still have fiat currency, which is inflating every year. Every day. Every day. And, I mean, the, the recent thing that the government has done...